Good morning, it's the 4th of October. Uh, I need to catch you guys up with everything that's been going on and sort of explain my hiatus from Instagram. Uh, I need to, well I don't need to, but I want to address my hiatus from Instagram, which I have not um, gotten back on at all yet. Uh, well, I guess I shouldn't say I haven't gotten it back on. Yesterday, I was going to post things like twice, and then I just didn't. Um, I thought I was gonna take a full break over the weekend, but I kept posting a little bit here and there, Saturday and Sunday just one thing Sunday because um, it was on my heart and obviously my hiatus has to do with our infertility journey uh, for numerous reasons and flat out it just hurts it hurts I'm gonna try to attempt this a second time today is Wednesday I tried doing this yesterday I do my very best to not let other people's happiness interfere with my happiness. And what I mean by that is when I see pregnancy announcements, I truly, from the bottom of my heart, try to do my best to be happy and express that happiness for those people celebrating the joyous news. However, year after year that goes by, it gets harder and harder and harder to be happy for them and I don't want to come across as being hurtful jealous hateful any of those things but I'm sure some people are going to view this as being just those things and that's not my intent it's easier for me to come across pregnancy announcements that aren't someone who's close to me, someone who isn't a family member, someone who isn't a friend, someone who, like I just know through social media, let's say, um, those are easy. Do they still hurt? Yeah, um, just being honest. Um, I guess before I move on any further, you guys know that obviously we create content and most of y'all are adults that watch our content, but we do create a family friendly environment, but this may, video may be um, a little bit too much um, with what I'm about to share, if I can share, because I tried yesterday. Uh, so if you guys have little ones or even teenagers, it might be too much for them to listen to this. So just know this is a warning and I'll make sure to put that in the title as well. Um, like I was saying, I can take those types of pregnancy announcements much easier even though they do hurt and even though I may need to step away from following those people for a time being or you know doing the snooze button thing on Facebook or something for a while, I can get by, I can move on. Does it sting? Does it hurt? Yes. But when it's someone who's really close to me in regards to being a family member or a close friend or a close acquaintance or someone who I thought was my friend, it's much harder. Um, 
And over the 11 years since all of our miscarriages ha have happened, every time, every year that goes by and another pregnancy announcement happens that is someone close to me, that announcement hurts more than I want it to. Sorry, it is what it is. I'm gonna cry. I try not to let it affect me the way that it does. And I've talked to my doctor about this many times, both infertility doctors and my regular family doctors. So believe me, I've talked about it with them many, many times. And I'm not ashamed to say that I have medicine if I need to use it um, to help me through times like these because this is just one of those times the last actually since like mid-September it's been a little bit rough but it just got more rough this past weekend and um, like I said, I don't want to use medicine to get me by because it just only numbs the pain. It doesn't take it away, but know that I am working through that and I'm trying to do my best and to hold it together. Um, we actually haven't used any of the medicine. Um, at all this time I'm really trying to work through it by doing some meditation listening to relaxing music um, and just doing things that make me happy I'm about to start a new puzzle that I bought yesterday at Target with Brad yesterday was the first day that I got out of the house since everything just came crashing down. Oh, I know I sound, I know I sound horrible for acting this way, going through infertility and having all of our seven precious babies in heaven. What has happened every time I hear a pregnancy announcement Every time I hear of a birth of a new baby or an adoption of a child or a baby, doesn't matter the age, um, it just stings a little bit more every single time. And those stings hurt more when it's someone that is closer to me. And. This weekend, I found out that a family member is pregnant who is much, much, much younger than I am. And it was an unplanned pregnancy and eventually the pain will get better. But I think what I'm trying to say is that it just hurts more and more every time that I see something like this happen because I just so desperately want it for us. I so desperately want to be a mom. I want to hear somebody call me mama. I want somebody to call Brad dad. And I just lose hope and I lose faith because I don't think it's going to ever happen, even though I pray about it every day, more than once. Sometimes probably more than I need to, but that's just me. And what's so hard is, this is the part that's going to be a trigger. 
but I just have to talk it through because talking about it is one of my coping, me coping mechanisms for me um, to help just get the pain off my chest. Every time a pregnancy announcement happens or a birth, it just stirs up my emotions to a level that I don't like them to be at. And it just stings and stabs in a way that I can't describe it other than crying. I, I saw two people um, that I'm friends with on Facebook recently have babies pretty much within the same week it was. One of them used to be a very, very close friend of mine and even though we're friends on Facebook, uh, we're not. They both had baby girls. And my friend who we don't talk anymore. We used to be very, very, very close. She used to be one of my best friends. And she had previously been supporting Brad and I for a very long time. And before we moved to, to Georgia, everything was fine. And then after we moved to Georgia, it sort of just like fell apart. I don't want to get into too many details, but um, because she was one of my best friends, she knew that I always had baby girl names picked out, always. Those always seem to be easier for me. It's just always what I had. I don't know why, that's just what happened. And she knew one of our names was either going to be part of the first name or part of the middle name and that's because it's um, my great grandma's name. It's a version of my great grandma. She used that name. And I know that sounds awful for me to be upset about that. It just stings because I didn't get a chance to do it first, you know? And she knew, she knew why that name was important to me. So seeing that, it just made me have to like mute her. Like I can't give myself that pain. And yes, I know that if God grants us with a baby girl versus IVF or adoption or whatever it may be, I know I can still use that name but it just hurts a lot more. The other person also had a baby girl. And then this third person um, who I was talking about earlier, we found out that she's pregnant. Obviously it wasn't planned. And they found out early on that it was a baby girl as well and having just those triple triggers happen back to back to back just literally broke me apart I just felt my world crashing down when I see those things. It gives me like all of the memories of every miscarriage that we went through. It basically triggers those memories in a way that I don't want to remember them, even though I know I'll never forget and I don't want to forget. 
but it's like at the worst absolute time, you know? Our first miscarriage was horrific. I, well, Brad and I found out early on because it was our first IVF trans transfer and it worked and we had transferred two embryos and we were going to the appointment to find out to see if there's one or two and we found out that there was two we were scared but also excited because i'm that person that i would be thrilled thrilled to have twins I don't know if it's something about going through IVF or if it's just always the idea of having twins. Um, I just, I always felt that way. After that appointment, I ended up going into work to close at the store I was working at. I started to bleed, not just a little. I started to panic called the doctor, um, what well, was the doctor's hotline, because it was after hours. And the doctor that I got on the phone with was not my doctor, which I knew could happen. But it was such an insensitive situation because that doctor was at home and I could hear her children crying in the background we're fighting one of the two and she told me it's probably okay it's fine just relax the next hour went by and it, it still was worse and getting worse and I started to have some really intense cramping so one of my co-workers drove me to the hospital and Brad met me there and my mom and dad met me there we finally got to go down to the basement area or the next level down, I don't remember, but we went to the ultrasound room and Brad wasn't allowed to come in with me. I knew in my heart something wasn't right because there was a lot of blood, a lot. The ultrasound tech that I had was not compassionate at all. I get it, she was just trying to do her job, but in this situation, there could have been at least a little bit of compassion and empathy. I had to hold my bladder before the ultrasound, and so after the ultrasound was done, I just felt there was just something coming out. I didn't even. I didn't even make it to the toilet. I stood up trying to get undressed to go to the bathroom, and as I was doing that, Part of the sack fell out onto the floor when the other part fell into the toilet and the nurse just basically said okay go to the bathroom clean up the best you can and just go out and sit wait for your husband she literally shoved me out the door because she got on the radio and said whatever the words, I don't know exactly the words, I just remember her tone and her just like, ugh, kind of tone in her mouth and her voice saying that we need a medical cleanup down here in ultrasound room, whatever, whatever. And she 
as I'm trying to clean up, like I kept asking, can I please have my husband in here? Can I please have my husband in here? I need him, he's right out there. Can you please get him? She wouldn't let him come in and I just was crying hysterically because we had just found out that morning that we were having twins. Brad, at the mean, in the meantime, could hear, could hear me crying. And he kept knocking on the door trying to get in and she wouldn't let him in until I got cleaned up and dressed as best I could to go out. He was so angry. She just walked away and went on to the next patient. And we literally sat down there waiting for the nurse to transport us back up. And there's that. There's more to it, but I don't want to make this video like a 30 minute video. Our second miscarriage was the one that I thought truly was going to work for us. We were moving to Savannah. I got a new job, a promotion. And I was supposed to start my new job about a week before our um, three month um, milestone. We had just moved into a house. Everything was fine. The last ultrasound that we had before moving, everything was fine. Brad was away in Charleston training for his new job. It was a Sunday night and I was supposed to start work the next day. And I just felt like these intense cramps that kept coming and going and coming and going and just coming in with intensity and and I'm just like something's not right something's not right and I tried to um, get a hold of my previous clinic but for whatever reason I couldn't get through to the hotline like nobody would answer like I just on-call operator would just not answer I just kept trying and I finally got a hold of Brad and I said you need to come home something's not right I'm going to be driving myself to the hospital and before I could even get myself dressed to go I tried laying down for about 20 minutes because it just was getting hor more horrible like more intense and it just kept getting worse, so I would stand back up, lay back down, stand back up, lay back down. And like I said, for about 20 minutes this went on. Um, I felt like I had to go to the bathroom. So I went into the bathroom. And that's where I basically gave birth to our baby. My pain basically was labor pain. And our poor baby. I didn't even have time to catch it. Because I didn't really think that that was happening. I was trying to say, no, this isn't happening all over again. So I didn't think to put my hand down to catch it. So instead our baby landed in the toilet. Once that happened, I don't really remember anything other than it was several hours later because I think Charleston was like two hours away from where we were living. Brett came home and he found me, I, was, I fell asleep on the bathroom floor. Our other miscarriages were hard as well. 
But these two are the ones that always, always get worse. The pain gets worse every time that I hear a pregnancy announcement or someone giving birth or an adoption announcement. And I know it's important to work through these emotions. And I know it's important to be happy and excited for those joyous moments for those people. But 11 years gone by and all we've been given is grief after grief after grief. It gets harder and harder to be happy for them. And I don't mean it. I don't mean it whatsoever. Everybody going through infertility suffers in a different way. Not saying that some are worse than others, but some of us have those vivid memories of what we experienced during our miscarriages. And there's some people who never even had the chance of knowing what it felt like to be pregnant for even a month or two months, and I understand that. I get it. Everybody's pain is valid. Everybody's pain is valid. Everybody's happiness and joy is valid too. I'm just expressing what it's like for me and potentially others in the infertility world. And again, it's okay if some of you feel that I'm being insensitive and jealous and hurtful to those people that I know. I'm not, believe me, I'm not. I don't like this any more than you are listening to it, you know? I dislike the fact that I'm even at this point sharing this vlog with you, but this is life. This is life. And it's definitely not the path that I hoped Brad and I would have. And I pray, I pray so hard that we will give, we will be given the chance to be parents. Believe me, none of this, none of it means anything to me because I would give up all materialistic things in order to have a child. The biggest thing for me is just the pain intensifies every single time. And I wish there was a way, I wish there was a way to not have that pain happen every single time, but it's going to happen. It's gonna happen again. It's going to happen. It's gonna happen again and again. I just pray at one point it will happen for us. And I pray that it happens for anyone else going through infertility struggles. Because the pain is a pain that I wish on no one. I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm obviously not okay, but I'm doing better than I was on Saturday when everything just sort of collided. I have a really good support system. Obviously Brad's my rock, he's my rock, and I don't know what I would do without him or I don't know what I would do without my family who have supported me through the thick and thin. I need to stop talking because this video is probably going to be like 30 minutes long. I'll definitely try to edit it as best I can. I don't know. I just needed to come on and talk through things. I feel the prayers and all the love. I pray that you never have to go through this. I pray that people you know never have to go through infertility. 
But the hard truth is, it happens more than you know. But for me, talking about it and getting it off my chest is a coping mechanism for me. And it helps. If you guys know someone going through infertility, just always be there for them. Don't ever lose hope for them. Don't ever stop caring and stop supporting them. I've had it happen to me too many times and to people who I really care about and still care about and understand their pain, understand their pain in a way that if all, you're, all you do is listen, that's okay. And if you're one of those people that experiences pregnancy or adoption and you have friends or family that are going through infertility, understand and respect that they just need some time to process things in their own way, however that may be. And just know that eventually that person will come around. Um, it just takes time. It takes time. Okay, I'm gonna end it there. Um, thank you. Thank you for listening to my heart. I know there's been a lot more infertility vlogs coming out recently, but I just feel compel compelled to share what's on my heart because this is life and I try to share all the joy, the joyous parts of life, but sometimes it's important to share these things too, or at least to me, it's important to share these things because this is real life and I don't want to hide the bad things you know so one more thank you from the bottom of my heart I'll see you guys in the next one